Uh, there it appears that briefing has started finally now with the city and the county. So let's take a listen as that starts. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining our joint City of Austin and Travis County press conference to discuss the severe weather and the impacts it's had on our residents. Uh, with this press conference, we're joined by Travis County Judge Andy Brown, City of Austin Mayor Steve Adler, City of Austin City Manager Spencer Cronk, and City of Austin Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Management Director Juan Ortiz. We are also joined by Austin Energy General Manager Jacqueline Sargent. We are also joined by our poll reporter from Fox 7 who will be asking questions after our opening statements. With that, I would like to hand it off to Travis County Judge Andy Brown for some comments. I think we lost Andy, Matt. I, actually, it looks like we've lost the judge, so I will go ahead and hand it off to uh, City of Austin Mayor Steve Adler. Hi. Well, it is cold outside and AC outside, and, and that's not news to, to We have, I understand now, uh, over 2 million people uh, in the state of Texas that are currently without power. Uh, this is a challenge, obviously, here in our home, uh, but also uh, all over the state. It's clear that this weather event is so extreme, almost uh, beyond imagination. This is the time when the, when the whole community uh, really needs to, to, to pull together and to, and to come together. You're going to hear in uh, just a moment how the city is expanding shelters and providing additional services. Uh, uh, that'll be covered here in a second. But uh, I just want to tell everybody that we need, we need your help, too. Uh, we need everybody to conserve, and you'll hear about that, to stay warm. Uh, but we also need for folks to, to, to take and, and help their neighbors. Uh, call neighbors that's around you that you are older or might be in need. Uh, call your family members, make sure everybody's doing okay. There are also some community organizations that are reaching out uh, in addition to what you'll hear that the city and the county are doing. Uh, please step in to, to support them. Uh, Diane and I are, are, are supporting uh, uh, several, one of which is the Austin Area Urban League. Uh, they've lost, launched an emergency donation drive uh, called the, the Love Thy Neighbor TX Campaign. That's uh, Love Thy Neighbor TX Campaign, except monetary donations. They're, they're putting together a hotel voucher uh, effort, uh, which certainly would be uh, real useful to, to many of our neighbors this evening. The website is uh, aaul.org, which is the Austin Area Urban League uh, .org. Uh, organizers have established safe methods to, to be able to accept monetary uh, donations from the, from the community. This is one of those things that happens once in several generations that really is going to require us all to, to pull together and to, and to help one another. Uh, and to that end, I think that uh, we'll hear from uh, some of the, the, the government uh, folks, the city and the county, uh, to talk about uh, uh, what's, what, what's happening there. It looks like we have the Travis County judge back online. So, uh, Judge, I'll hand it back off to you so you can get your comments in. Thanks so much. Um, so, yeah, like so many of you, I've actually been with... It looks like the judge is still having some technical issues. Um, so with that, I will uh, hand it off to um, Austin City Manager uh, for some comments. Thank you. And as the mayor said, this has truly been an unprecedented event. And I want to start by thanking all of the employees and first responders who are working tirelessly to keep our operations running and helping our community through as we get through this extreme weather event. As a city, we are doing our best to help those in the greatest need. 
We have received numerous offers to help, including from our faith-based community, nonprofits, and community groups. And we want to thank all of those who have stepped up to offer support. Without. We have an amazing team and community members that are doing incredible work under very challenging circumstances, and we appreciate everyone's patience. As the mayor said, we're all in this together, and it's going to take all of us standing with each other, helping our neighbors to get through this. And the most important thing you can do to help your fellow Austinites and our first responders is to stay off the roads and conserve energy. Every little bit helps. Now to turn into more of the operational issues, I'm going to ask Juan Ortiz with our joint information or joint emergency management center to provide some details. Juan. Thank you, Senator Spencer. Um, first of all, I want to let everybody know uh, that we are not having any impacts to 911 operations. But, and we're still asking the, the public to please keep 911 open for immediate emergencies only. Uh, we are having some technical difficulties with 311 and, and the austintexas.gov website, which are currently down due to technical and power issues. Currently, we have uh, we have opened up a, a warming center that is open at the Palmer Event Center. Uh, you can show up at any time. Um, from there, individuals will be routed to additional shelters if necessary and if uh, driving conditions permit it to happen safely. Um, we have uh, currently today, as of this morning, we have a, uh, a cold weather shelters remain active throughout the, uh, throughout the day. And uh, as of this morning, we have uh, 282 people that, that were sheltered overnight uh, at the cold weather shelters at the, and the Palmer Event Center. We are asking all residents to stay off the roads to help first responders and only drive if they really need to be on the roads and give themselves plenty of time to get to the destinations and please drive slowly the roads are still very treacherous uh, and you can very easily uh, um, be fooled with the limited visibilities of all the snow and ice that we have on the roads right now and can get trapped, which would then put first responders in a harm way as they have to go out and, and potentially have to rescue you from those situations. So again, we want to ask everybody to please um, stay off the roads as much as they possibly can. Monitor the news and other city, social, and county uh, media channels. Uh, we will be using those to make sure that we're uh, relaying as much of the information as we can when we have it, and uh, and if and, and and if necessary, be able to pass on to you um, um, actions that you can take to protect yourselves and your family. We urge residents to kind of, again uh, want to reiterate the same message of urging the residents and everybody to conserve as much power as we and as possible to help with the emergency issues and austin energy will follow my remarks with uh, to further discuss the rotating outages we are working um, with critical facilities like hospitals and other critical locations to ensure that uh, the the access to those facilities remains open to ensure that ambulances are able to access those uh, emergency rooms ramps and, and make sure that, that those uh, th those locations are completely accessible uh, in, in the event that uh, uh, we have uh, to transport medical personnel to those locations. If you need, um, th that, that's the end of my remarks. Thank you very much, Juan. And before we jump over to, to Austin Energy, I see we have Judge Brown back, so I definitely want to give him an opportunity to uh, try again and see if this will work. All right, how's this? Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, awesome, thanks. Uh, yeah, so as I was saying, I'm actually, the power's still off at my house, so I'm doing this from my car without really a good internet connection. Um, it's been off since about 2 a.m. today, so I think that there's a lot of people, a lot of us in the same boat here in, in Austin and Travis County. But I do know that the electric companies and the, the providers of energy in, in the county and the city are doing everything they can to get it back online so that we have power in our house. And just want to echo what everybody else said about definitely stay in your house if at all possible. Um, 
in, in, unless there's some, some kind of emergency because the roads are extremely dangerous. Um, I also want to take a second just to thank all the first responders. I was up at the emergency operations center last night uh, with Juan and Eric and others until about 1 a.m. And the work that they're doing is amazing. They're able to connect, for, as one example, uh, one subdivision in eastern Travis County that did not have, they'd run out of propane, basically, in their subdivision. And through the work of the city, uh, Molly with the city was able to get a sand truck to lead a propane truck to fill that back up. And so there's really amazing work going on by our first responders, by everyone at the city and the county. And the best thing that, that we can do is, uh, that you can do is stay home and, and not uh, create any additional work for them, frankly, on the roads today. But thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. And at this time, I will pass it off to uh, Austin Energy um, General Manager, Jacqueline Sargent. Thank you. Um, as the general manager, I want all of our customers to know how concerned uh, we are about you during this unprecedented weather emergency. Um, as you know, this is a statewide event causing a Texas electric grid emergency and, an, and a very urgent call for energy conservation. Um, we know that not having power is extremely frustrating and unnerving uncomfortable, and we want our customers to know that we are doing everything that we can to work through this ongoing and, and fluid situation. We strongly urge our customers that still have power uh, to greatly reduce the amount of energy that they are using to help conserve as much as possible. Here's some of the things that you can do to help. Turn down your thermostats, uh, close your blinds, Turn off and unplug devices that are not needed. Every little bit that you can do will help us. Austin Energy um, is part of the ERCOT uh, wholesale market. We work in concert with ERCOT to prepare for energy emergencies. We have plans in place and we take direction from ERCOT and the things that we do are helping to strengthen and maintain the Texas grid. Uh, with everyone's help, hopefully we can work together and reduce demand enough so that we can get power back on to our customers. We have scheduled circuits that do not contain critical load. Critical load consists of things like hospitals, control centers, fire stations, water treatment uh, facilities. And so we need to maintain electricity to those uh, places. And then we have a sequence of circuits that we um, disconnect so that we can lower the demand on the system. This event happened quickly and the amount of, of load that we needed to remove from the grid was significant and it was in just a matter of a very short time that we maxed out on all of the available circuits that we have to disconnect and not interrupt critical load. So because we're at that max limit, there's no more energy that we can shut off at this time so that we can bring these customers back on. And that's why it's so important that we do come together as a community and help each other during this very unprecedented time. Thank you. Thank you everyone so much for those remarks. At this time, I'm gonna open it up for media questions. Uh, I'm gonna hand it over to our poll reporter, Bridget Spencer with Fox 7 News. Hey, good afternoon, thanks for having me. Um, first question here is from KUT. How can people without power get to a warming center if everyone is being asked to stay off the roads? Any recommendations for those people without power? Yes, that's a, that's a really good question. And, and, and that's why it's, it's important that if you need to get to a warming center, uh, make the decision now, get out uh, and, and go to the Palmer Event Center while there's still daylight. 
And, and if, if you need to be on the roads, that way the daylight will help you get there in a safe manner. Um, if you wait, it, it's going to just get more complicated in the, in, in, in the dark uh, and, and, and puts you at, at risk. Uh, that's why uh, we're saying, uh, you know, to stay off the roads um, unless you really have to and getting to the Palmer Event Center because you need to stay warm. That's uh, obviously that's something that uh, that is necessary. Uh, but if you need to do so, uh, go ahead and come on now while there's still plenty of daylight. Thank you. Uh, next question is from the Austin Chronicle. What's being done to make sure unhoused people have shelter? Are admissions into pro lodges being accelerated or are there other options being considered? The city has um, an existing the cold weather shelter plan that has been in existence for, for many, many years. And it's a collaboration between the city and the county and the countless of uh, uh, organizations that, 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 that on a daily basis work to ensure that we have services for those persons that are experiencing homelessness. This plan traditionally it, uh, is centered to provide services for overnight sheltering. Because of this unique situation, a decision was made uh, several days ago to extend the program and, and provide the service 24 hours a day. Uh, and, and to ensure that we are provi uh, providing those services, adhering to the social distancing requirements that we're living in during this COVID-19 pandemic that, that we are, that the entire world is, is suffering. Obviously that introduces some challenges to the process so we're having to ensure that we um, evaluate the proper uh, capacity and assess it to meet those COVID-19 uh, requirements. And it has required us to open up additional facilities to ensure that we have plenty of space to meet the need. Like I indicated before, uh, overnight, we were able to support uh, 282 individuals that came in and were processed uh, we still have space remaining and we're opening up additional space uh, and we're recording that we're, it's going to be coordinated uh, through the Palmer Event Center uh, facility that we have there. And we're working with countless organizations to expand those capacities uh, to ensure that if anybody that needs a place to come in and stay warm, there has, they have a place. And we're working with Capital Metro to see what can be done to ensure that we have uh, um, the, the ability to move uh, those, uh, those persons that need to stay warm to the proper locations, even though that they're having challenges right now uh, with limited uh, services due to the uh, current weather conditions that we are experiencing. Hey, Juan, is that number, the 512-305 ICEE uh, operating and, and active? Uh, for information about warming and cold weather, sh weather shelters. Yes, Mayor, that, that number is, um, um, is, is uh, should be up and running. And we have, uh, we're working with our, um, the Austin Travis County uh, EMS services uh, to to uh, make sure that we're coordinating with all of the, the members that are of the uh, organizations that, are, that traditionally work with them um, um, persons that are experiencing homelessness. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is from CBS Austin. What percentage of Austin energy outages are caused by ERCOT and what are other local problems? And when do you expect to have these issues resolved? This morning, ERCOT said outages are being caused by local generational, I mean, generation transmission owners having problems keeping up with and lowering demand, overwhelming the systems. So we have some, uh, this is Jackie Sargent again with Austin Energy. We have some uh, situations where we've had some outages um, and we are including that in our load shed requirements. So right now that is all, um, all wrapped together uh, to meet those obligations that we have uh, for the rotating outages that ERCOT has directed us uh, to do. We are standing ready. Uh, our crews are prepared. Um, we are working on infrastructure um, and we are working 
to, to do that safely in these very extreme conditions. Our folks have been working around the clock. Um, I can't break out a percentage of any specific load that I can identify to a, um, a non-event outage at this time, um, but we are aware of where our system is at and we are operating within the constraints um, and the direction of ERCOT. ERCOT has said that based on what they are looking at, that this situation is likely to continue uh, through the night and possibly into the afternoon uh, tomorrow. So it depends on what we do uh, as consumers in managing our load, uh, our consumption of electricity, and the more that we can do to conserve, the more we can help our neighbors. Um, and then also uh, making sure that um, our resources are operating appropriately. And Austin Energy has staffing 24-7. Uh, we have people that are staying in our facilities uh, to make sure that we can continue to operate and we are doing everything possible um, to help manage this situation. Okay, thank you. Next question is from the statesman. How many exposure-related calls have Austin first responders gotten? And can you give some examples? Have any exposure-related deaths been recorded as well? I don't have that information uh, at this point in time, but I, I can uh, uh, ask the uh, Austin Travis County EMS and can provide that information after the call. Thank you. Um, next question from KVU. What is Austin Energy's goal for having power restored to all? Is it too early to predict? I would say right now it's too early to predict um, and that uh, we are in this event. It is a statewide event and we are currently uh, operating uh, under direction from ERCOT, the, the grid operator. Um, and so we will have to follow those directions and we're waiting uh, for that direction from ERCOT to be able to restore um, power to our customers. Uh, as I said previously, ERCOT is saying that the situation could continue through the evening and possibly into tomorrow afternoon. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is from Austin Monitor. Was there a plan to deal with loss of power for 311 and the city website? How do you intend to deal with this situation in the future? Uh, Could you repeat that question? Sure. Uh, was there a plan to deal with the loss of power for 311 and the city's website? How do you intend to deal with this situation in the future? So 311 is being impacted um, by, not by a loss of power, um, but by some technology challenges that, that are happening. Um, we are working with our utility contact center to back up that resource. Um, and uh, we will continue to see what can be done to mitigate that. We are working in, in conjunction with the cities. Uh, IT um, folks, and they are working uh, very diligently to restore those services, both the web services and the 311 center, um, contact center. Juan, I don't know if you have anything that you can add to that for us. After every uh, disaster that, that our community experiences, we actually go through a very rigorous uh, after action review process and identify uh, ways that, uh, that, uh, that we can prevent these uh, types of impacts from happening. Uh, uh, once this uh, event is over, we will be conducting a, an after action and identifying uh, uh, protective actions that, that we will be engaging with the different uh, departments in the city and the county to ensure that uh, anything that we can do to strengthen and make our community more resilient uh, we, we will, uh, those are, are addressed. Uh, 
again, this is our, you know, unprecedented uh, events that, that, that we have not experienced in, in, in probably 30 or 40 years. And so there's some uh, things that were not in, uh, that didn't exist uh, back in the early 1980s when we had an event similar to this that, um, that, that uh, now uh, do exist. And so there's some things that we're going to learn. And, and we are committed to ensuring that we uh, identify those and make sure that we set the, the right uh, teams to address them and, and, and complete those corrective actions. Thank you very much. Uh, Austonia has the next question. Is there any indication that energy customers are heeding the call to preserve, uh, conserve power? We are making those requests. Um, we have reached out to um, specific groups of customers and they are responding uh, by conserving. And the things that I talked about earlier um, that individuals can do, such as lowering your thermostats and, and closing your blinds and unplugging uh, devices that are not currently being used uh, will help us. Um, we cannot measure each individual's contributions at that small a scale, but collectively, um, it will help us to, to better manage uh, the current situation. Thank you. Next question is from us here at Fox 7. It appears that South Austin seems to be bearing the brunt of the blackouts. Is that the case? And if so, why is that? Uh, that is not the case. Um, the uh, outages are across the system and uh, they are designated uh, by specific circuits. Um, and those circuits, if you look at the outage map, are um, across, across our service territory. Yeah, for whatever it's worth, I'm in Hyde Park and my power has been off since too. So, and, and I think the whole, at least part of, uh, it's everything sort of west of Duval, as best I can tell, in that area has been out up until, I think, over to like Lamar or something. And okay, those, thank you. those circuits. Sorry, I, I, did I interrupt you? Go ahead. I was just going to add that those are the are part of the circuits um, that we were instructed by ERCOT to um, turn off as part of response to this event. And as we added all those circuits, we got to the point where we hit all of them, so we couldn't drop um, we, we couldn't drop additional uh, load to enter to go back and start picking up and rotating through. So we got to that maximum point, and and there's and we're it's basically we're stuck here until we can get some reprieve from ERCOT and can start releasing some of those circuits and then work into uh, rotating uh, those outages. So um, it's it's a tough situation. We understand that uh, we're doing everything we can uh, to get people to get to get to a place where we can get people's power back on. Thank you. Uh, next question is from Community Impact. With more cold temperatures and precipitation in the forecast later this week, is there a chance once power is restored, it will have to be reduced again? And what steps are being taken to improve events in the future? So that is a, uh, a possible outcome that could occur. Um, there are a number of things. Um, if you know, we see this continuously across the entire footprint of the, the ERCOT grid um, across our state, then it is likely that we'll continue to have challenges um, to be able to meet the demand. And so asking customers to conserve is something that's going to be and continue to be very critical. With additional weather events, um, especially moisture in these freezing temperatures, we get buildup of ice on, on vegetation, you know, trees, on power lines, 
on equipment that we have, and that causes, um, in the case of trees, branches to break off, fall, uh, either come in contact with power lines, actually in some cases pull those power lines down and create outages in, in areas. Um, and some of those areas are very challenging to get to. We saw that in our, the northwest area of our service territory where we have canyons and we have um, a, a great deal of, of vegetation um, and we had to get crews into uh, those locations. And with the icy conditions, um, that makes it very challenging. And for people working uh, you know, tireless, tirelessly around the clock uh, to be out in those elements and, and get that power restored. Um, but our folks are ready to do that. Um, they're committed to doing that. And they like to see the lights on. And we want to do that for our customers. So I would say continue to watch and monitor these conditions. Uh, do what you can uh, to, to be prepared um, and have those resources that you need available um, because we cannot say for sure that this won't continue to, to go on and continue to happen. Um, it is going to be very dependent on what happens within uh, the state, within ERCOT, and then uh, more specifically in our own service territory here in Austin. Next question is from KXAN. Are people without running water because of this storm? How many and what is the city or county doing to help? My understanding from the water department is uh, they have had a, a, a few uh, water main breaks, but uh, nothing that has resulted in any major loss of water. Um, my understanding is that all of those are, are being addressed in, in a timely manner, but I will, uh, after the call, we'll get you more detailed information on that. And uh, this looks like the last question from uh, where are they located? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, how many shelters does the city currently have and where are they located? Um, we currently are um, have four cold weather shelters that are uh, um, that are open and are running. Um, and plus a, uh, a warming center that is also uh, functioning as a shelter. Uh, we, we are coordinating all, um, we're distributing the uh, persons that need to be sheltered to the different shelters through the uh, Palmer Event Center. So for that reason, we're not disclosing the locations of all of the shelters, uh, but we are using uh, uh, facilities that we've used in the past uh, in, a, in, a, in, in a manner that, that allows us to make sure that we um, um, uh, ha um, have uh, the control of, of, of how the people are coming in and make sure that we have the adequate level of resources at each location. Um, we're also, uh, um, and what I can say is that they're spread out throughout the, throughout the city. We're also looking at other uh, uh, three additional potential locations, excuse me, actually four additional potential locations and they have different varying uh, capacity, but uh, we feel that uh, by the end of today, uh, we will have approximately 450 uh, spaces available, and which is um, like, uh, you know, doubling uh, more uh, what our current um, uh, occupancy is. And we'll be gauging that and we'll be expanding and, and opening up additional centers if, 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 if that is required. Also, along those lines, what we some of the things to kind of gauge what the need is in the community. Uh, last night, we put together a, a, a task force between the city and the county uh, and, and mobilized the task force consisting of Austin Police, Austin Fire, and Austin Travis County EMS and the Austin Parks and Recs Department you know, with public officials went out to 45 encampments and offered rides to cold weather shelters, uh, at, you know, to the people experiencing homelessness and anybody else that we uh, that they encountered, uh, and, and to ensure that uh, they were aware and 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 make sure that transportation was not going to be an issue, and those operations continued all the way uh, till about six this morning. We'll be reevaluating that and, and making sure that we uh, that if necessary, 
uh, engage those activities again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bridget. And with this, I'll turn it back over to, uh, do we still have Judge Brown on? Judge Brown, if you're still on, I'll turn it back over to you for some uh, closing comments. Thanks. I, yeah, there, I don't know if my video is working, but I think just want to thank everybody, especially all the first responders for their work. And also, I believe that there's, we may, be asking people tomorrow morning if they do have power and if they are trying to go you know to work or take a shower in the morning i believe that there's some request that maybe people take showers tonight so that we aren't all using hot water and gas first thing in the morning tomorrow so if there's a way to accommodate for that and not you know at the first thing crack of dawn tomorrow uh i think about the hours from maybe 7 to, to 10 a.m not overload the usage of gas is something a message that i had received as well but overall i want to thank uh juan and eric and everybody at the emergency operations center for all of their their work for these uh, past few days mr mayor in the, in the judge, I want to join in the judge in, in, in thanking the first responders, all the volunteers, but also all the community groups that are engaged at this point. This is truly an, an absolutely unprecedented uh, uh, perfect storm. Uh, and we're all in this together. And we're going to have to hang together. Know that there are 2 million people across the state of Texas dealing with this, this very same thing. Folks are working really hard to try and get power back on. But it could be a while. Uh, you know, there's a phone number to call if you're looking for, for, for a warmer place to be, 512-305-ICE, that's I-C-E-E, 512-305-ICE, -E, -E -E. the safest place you can be is to stay in your house, uh, to stay warm. If you can't and you have to go out, uh, try that number. Uh, you can go to the Palmer uh, Events Center. Uh, that's one place to go, and if uh, there's a better place for you to be, though, they have services there and they can get you to a uh, warmer, better place. <clears throat> know that there are a lot of people in the community that are helping. I'll just repeat again, uh, AAUL, that's the Austin Area Urban League.org, AAUL.org, the Love Thy Neighbor Texas campaign, accepting mon monetary donations for things like hotel vouchers. If you want to donate a warm blanket, Front Steps is accepting those at their downtown location, or you can even order a blanket online and have it shipped to them direct, directly. The food bank is uh, closed today, but if you're in need of food, uh, dial 211 or 211texas.org. Uh, this is one of those times when it's not just the government, it's, it's, it's all the, the, the charitable and service organizations, it's everybody calling their neighbors, especially if they're elderly. Uh, we're all in this together and, and, and we're going to take it one moment at a time. Be safe. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes our uh, media briefing on the cold weather events that have impacted our city. Uh, we remind everyone to, um, I'm sorry, I just got a, a message. Uh, city Manager Spencer Cronk, I believe you had some closing comments as well. Sure, just want to really appreciate again everyone in our community that's leaning in to not only uh, ensure that they are keeping themselves and their families safe, but keeping their neighbors safe. Uh, as we know, this is impacting every corner of our state, uh, but it's also impacting the corners of our neighborhood and the corners of our homes. And so the more that we can look to our neighbor and find out what assistance we can be providing them, uh, the better off we're going to be collectively. So thank you to everyone that's really leaning into this and ensuring that we're all uh, in this together. Uh, I also want to just appreciate the first responders and all the, ci the city employees, the county employees uh, that are really uh, working around the clock uh, to keep us safe. Uh, this is a once in a generation event and we will get through it and we will get through it together. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Again, everyone, this actually does now conclude our, our media briefing. Again, we remind everyone to, consider, to continue to follow uh, city and county social media channels um, for further updates and uh, changing information. Thank you again, everybody. Uh, hey there, everybody. Will Dupree once again in the KXAN live studio. Uh, we've just reached the conclusion, obviously, of that news conference that uh, both the Austin city leaders and Travis County and Austin Energy held collectively there. Uh, the big thing that a lot of people were, were wanting to find out was when is power going to be back on? A reasonable, understandable question at this time because so many of you have been without power for hours at this point, and there is no specific answer uh, being shared right now. What has happened is that ERCOT, the overseer of the Texas electric grid, has mandated that utility companies throughout the area and throughout the state that they reduce the power that's being put out there. So Austin Energy has turned off every available circuit that it can. The only ones that remain are those to critical infrastructure like hospitals or water plants or uh, firehouses or things like that. Um, again, Austin Energy has turned off every circuit available that is not connected to a critical uh, facility at this time. So that is why these outages have lasted so long. Um, there additionally may be some weather um, circumstances that have led to outages. Uh, the general manager of Austin Energy could not say exactly what that percentage is, but she did stress again that they have, uh, as you see at the bottom there, they have, quote, no more energy we can shut off at this time. Again, that is because of state directive from ERCOT. If people need places to go, there is a warming center at the Palmer, uh, Palmer Event Center. Um, it is also acting as a shelter, plus uh, from what the city's emergency management director had said is that they have four shelters open at this time that are running. There potentially could be more that are going to open. They're going to expand occupancy at some of these places uh, to create additional spots. He also noted um, that the city and county formed a task force and they went around. Um, this was people, first responders like police and fire and uh, sheriff's deputies going to 45 different encampments throughout the city um, starting last night, working into the early morning hours, reaching people who are living in those places uh, to see if they can be taken to uh, these shelters to stay warm because it is dangerously cold for anyone to be outside for any extended amount of time, especially sleeping. Uh, so that effort will be continuing what the emergency management director said. There is a hotline available as well. The phone number is 512-305-ICEE. -E, uh, you can call to find out information about uh, cold weather shelters and the warming center, according to Mayor Steve Adler. So I wanted to share that again. That number is 512-305-ICEE. -E. Going back through my notes to make sure I'm um, touching on everything that we probably should address at this time. Uh, one question that went to Austin Energy, and I know that a lot of people will want to know this too, is that uh, when is the goal to restore power right now? And uh, the general manager at Austin Energy, Jackie Sargent, said that, quote, it's too early to predict at this time. Uh, what they're saying is that those who have power right now, who may be on the same circuits as those critical infrastructure, uh, should do everything imaginable to conserve energy because there is simply such a strain on the available electricity all across the state, not just in Austin, but all across Texas. Uh, okay, everybody, um, I'm going to wrap up our stream now and tell you all that we have more resources available at our website, uh, kxan.com and on the KXAN News app. You can download that if you've not done so already. We are continuing to monitor this situation, and I wish we had better news to share at this time, but please stay informed. Um, any update that we get, we will be putting it out there, and I hope that you'll be paying attention. And stay warm, everybody. We'll see you back here another time. I'm Will Dupree. Take care.